He is America's favorite teenager. Created in 1941 by John Goldwater and Bob Montana, red-headed Archie Andrews was the high schooler who could never choose between two gorgeous girls, blonde Betty Cooper or brunette Veronica Lodge. Along with best friend Jughead Jones and rival Reggie Mantle, the trio attended Riverdale High in a tremendously popular line of comic books. But in 1968, the Archie Comics empire was given a seismic jolt into the contemporary scene when Filmation Studios' The Archie Show debuted on Saturday morning television. How did an animated series based on a teen comic book become one of the highest rated TV shows on the planet? How did The Archies sell millions of records? And what was the deal with groovy dances like The Weatherby and The Hamburger? In this exclusive documentary, you'll find out the answers to these questions and more from Filmation founder and Archie's producer, Lou Scheimer. Return with us to the adventures of Hot Dog, the Chocolate Shop, Bubblegum Pop Music, and all the fun at Riverdale High. Come on, let's go with The Archie Show. The Archie Show. First show was on the air September the 14th of 1968. Went into production late 67. And it all started on a rainy day. Was this not? No, this was not really a rainy day. We, sh we showed Fred Silverman the presentation, which at that day it was, it was really just a, a comic book. I mean, if you see this comic book, you know what the show is like. The whole concept was really brought to us by a guy named Irv Wilson, who was still around doing something as an agent. We presented it with a stack of comic books. Cheapest presentation we ever made, and probably one of the most successful shows we ever produced. I had never heard of Archie. I was a little too young for... I know I wasn't too young for that. I was too old for that. <laughs> But, but when I, the more I, I saw the show, I looked at the comic books and saw the, 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 the possibility of endless stories made it really effective as far as I was concerned. Uh, I, I talked to, as I recall, I, uh, this was not a very difficult presentation because Silverman was really prepared because he knew about the show. And we had done a number of shows uh, that were very successful on CBS. Hey, I've got it. Is it catching? The reason I knew it was going to be successful was Silverman started laughing and clapping, and he never did that at anything. I mean, this really hit him right where it, it, he understood it. He understood it. He knew what would happen with those characters, how they could be used. And we did one thing that I think was a major addition and that was the use of music is integral to the show uh, and and it, it gave you uh, something t that was not th that was not being done for children's shows it was the first time that a children's show had a a, a group come uh, created for them we were in a strange period that children's programming had reached in Saturday morning the shows were basically not really all that good for kids. We, of course, did nothing wrong. <laughs> but, but, but truthfully, we didn't. Uh, the, uh, the adventure shows we did had morals of, of some sort. Uh, we did Superman, Batman, uh, uh, Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas, Teen Titans. I mean, if it, uh, if it flew around and had a cape, we had done some version of it. And I really thought it was appropriate then, especially then, because the atmosphere about children's programming had nothing to do with it. it was on the air, it had to do with a lot of people yelling and screaming who never watched the shows. Uh, and I thought it would be wonderful to find a, a subject or a, a group of, uh, of, of characters that would be the absolute opposite of the shows that were being produced. Hey, you can say that again. You could look at these guys, and it's not like looking at Superman, where he had two characters. Once the, the, the dynamic super guy and just the reporter. And these guys had everything. They had a nut who could do anything but go to school. They had a 
kid who loved two girls and didn't know how to make it work. We had two girls, one rich, one poor. How do you make that work? Uh, you had a dog who didn't care about any of that madness because all he wanted to do was eat hamburgers, I think. Or one of them wanted to eat hamburgers. And then you had Jughead, who you loved to hear and see. And they all liked music. It was perfect for music. And we found a guy who really was perfect for it. And uh, it was Don Kirshner. And my partner was a guy named Norm Prescott. Norm passed away a year ago. But he came from the music business. And he knew Don Kirshner, who had just done a wonderful series uh, for Columbia Pictures called The Monkees. And he wanted to show them, because he had a row with uh, Columbia, that he could do it all over again. And he did do it all over again. He did it with them and victory written all over his face. He produced the shows and he delivered them to us whole. Uh, we told him what we wanted to do and what the, uh, the attitude should be and what kind of stories we were doing. All that stuff was delivered finished, which was the nicest way to work. Because there was a lot of work in this, and those shows were, were tough. And I was just looking at one, and I haven't looked at one in 25 years. And boy, that was good stuff. The voices of the Archies were really done by Ron Dante and Tony Wine. I met Ron Dante, but it was long after the show was done. Uh, Tony Wine, I, have, I don't know. Uh, it, uh, Norm took part in that and handled that uh, wonderfully. Actually, there's another thing. They were good looking. We made some changes in the characters because there were sort of uh, a lot of lines going on. And we got rid of a lot of lines because every time you have a line in there, it's got to be animated, looked around, and it has a tendency maybe not to work. So the comic books have the same characters. And if you look at our characters, they look sort of like the comic books, but they're more animatable. Reggie was just too much competition for me.